today we're out here in Chicago taking a look at the all new, hotly anticipated 2020 Subaru Legacy. The big deal for this generation is A, that it's all new. There's really nothing shared with the outgoing model. And we now have a turbocharged four cylinder engine under the hood not the horizontally opposed six cylinder that we saw in the last generation model. That's likely going to seriously improve the overall driving dynamics because it's going to push a lot of weight rearwards in the vehicle. Coming up front, we see relatively reserved design language here, very similar to what we saw in the last generation Legacy. We have available LED headlamps up here with some distinctive accent strips right there, fog lamps down below, and the overall grill and front end design looks very much like the rest of the Subaru family. Again, they're not really expanding the envelope here when it comes to overall styling. That's not Subaru style. They don't tend to make things overly flashy. There's still some details we don't know, but in terms of overall length, this does appear to be a little bit shorter than the main competition from Honda and from Toyota. That's likely going to cause a slight reduction in overall rear seat legroom versus those Japanese competitors. But the advantage to the Legacy, of course, as before, is that all-wheel drive is standard on all models of this car. And that's something that we just don't see from the competition. In fact, if you want a sedan in this category with all-wheel drive, you have very, very few options. We have the all-new Nissan Altima, which is available with all-wheel drive, but only in the top and turbo trim. And going forward, that is basically going to be it because the Ford Fusion has been discontinued. Now, going out back, we find, again, the same sort of conservative styling that we saw up front, these distinctive tail lamp modules, very similar to what we see in other Subaru models, and then we have dual exhaust tips right down here at the bottom. Now this one is the turbocharged version. Under the hood, we don't find new engines, but we find engines that are new to the Legacy. So this now uses Subaru's latest four-cylinder boxer engine design, borrowed from the all-new Forester, produces about 180 horsepower in base trim. Then you can select the option for the turbocharged engine, which has been borrowed out of the larger Subaru Ascent. That produces 260 horsepower and a whopping 277 pound-feet of torque. Power is routed to all four wheels by default via standard continuously variable transmissions. At this point in time, it looks like if you want a manual transmission, you will have to shop elsewhere because it doesn't look like one will be offered in the Legacy. The 2020 Legacy gets a new seat design. I do find this particular seat very comfortable, and we also have a tilt telescopic steering column. We aren't sure exactly how much of these interior components are directly shared with other Subaru models, but really nothing is shared with the outgoing Legacy. So this may share some components in terms of behind the scenes components with the Ascent and of course the new Forester. The steering wheel is basically the same that we see in some of these other modern Subarus. There are a lot of buttons going on up front and we have shift paddles on the back. We don't have exact legroom figures just yet, but based on the overall design of the Legacy, I expect overall legroom to come in a little bit below some of the larger entries in this segment, just due to the overall design of the Legacy. We do have that engine entirely in front of the front axle, and because of the way the transmission and everything is arranged in a typical Subaru, that does result in a slightly more compact interior. However, this front seat is definitely adjusted for a taller person than I am. I still have a decent amount of legroom. Like many of the sedans in this particular segment at the moment, however, headroom is a little bit limited. If I sit upright in this back seat, my head is definitely touching the ceiling. Overall interior parts quality is certainly high back here, just like it was up front. But the steering wheel really isn't the big news in this cabin. It's right here in the center console because we get one of the largest screens available in America, period. If you want a screen that's larger than this, you'll have to either buy a Tesla or, oddly enough, a Ram pickup truck. In an unexpected twist, if you get the base model, we actually don't get a single tiny screen in the dash. We actually get a two-screen infotainment system, kind of like what we see in Infinity models. That's a really nice touch for this segment. Now, we are told that this screen features Android Auto and Apple CarPlay integration, and of course, there are a bunch of different apps that integrate with this system as well. It also has a split-screen functionality, so if you're using Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, then those functions will actually only occupy about half of the screen, leaving the rest for other system functions. The overall interior parts quality is also significantly improved. The dashboard features a large amount of stitch materials on the upper sections, the lower sections of the dashboard, and we have the highest grade of leather ever used in a Subaru product. In terms of cargo capacity, the trunk appears to be pretty competitive, and most importantly, it's also very square, which is something that I really appreciate. That means it's going to be a lot easier to put large bags on the inside. In addition to having a large and practical trunk, Subaru is also one of the only brands that does have mounting points right up here on the roof intended for roof rails baked into the design initially. That's something that we generally only see in European luxury vehicles, but we do find that on the Subaru Legacy. Subaru hasn't announced pricing for the all new Legacy just yet, but we are told to expect that closer to the time when this will actually be on sale in the US. You should expect to find this on dealer lots sometime in the fall of 2019, 
likely with good dealer availability sometime at the end of the 2019 calendar year. Now, we don't expect pricing to be deviating too much from the existing Subaru Legacy, so you can bet that the base model with all-wheel drive is still going to be an excellent value in this segment with the addition of all-wheel drive. And you should expect the top-end turbocharged model to be about the same price as the high horsepower options from Toyota and, of course, Honda. We will, of course, have a first drive review just as soon as we can get our hands on one of these. But in the meantime, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down there at the bottom of your screen. And, of course, let me know what you think about the all-new 2020 Legacy. I'll see you later.